as you were a teenager doing that project, um, a decade was, ago, bro. A yeah. decade. Oh, <laughs> it's it's crazy. it's it's so long ago. Like Ooh. you know, because I rem- I think that I was I was a little bit older when that came out. I think I may have been like uh, maybe eighteen ish, maybe yeah. like nineteen, but. I remember, like, because I, I, my period at the time was the Hannah Montana slow and Cody, That's a Raven, what? period. What? And I was thinking, dang, <laughs> I wish I had that when I, <laughs> when I was that age and I was actively watching Disney Channel. Yeah. I wish I had that. Um, yeah. So it was it was really good to see that yeah. happening. But as a teen actor, what's something that you, you've learned as an adult actor uh, over time that you wish you would have known when you were acting as a child and a teenager? Oh man, That's, I don't watch stuff when I was young. It's so funny. It's like I, I'm like, oh, you, you're trying, little buddy. You you were doing it. You could do. That's that's the worst thing. Even now, like even stuff from months ago, if I watch, I'm like, God, I feel like I can always do better, always fix something. Um, and that's what I mean. It's like per case. Like every time I see something, I'm like, oh, just adjust that. And it's you know they're becoming minor now, but you know what I'm saying. It's like mm-hmm. I just think there's always a way to be more real and i think when i was young i was i was that was my um i think i tried really hard Mm. when i was a kid you know and i feel like even a lot of auditions that's why i didn't get because i wanted it so bad and i'd be so like nervous and like scared so i'm like you know but the minute that i stopped giving an f about the people watching me and i'm like you guys need me that energy you know what i'm saying yeah it all changed, you know, I started booking things and I, and, and it, and it doesn't have to be an F you to the people behind the camera, but it's more of like, we're equals. You're not, you're not the gatekeeper to my destiny. Like you don't hold the keys to my life. Like God, you know, you're not a God to do. And I'm, I'm a person, you're a person. We're both here to do a project. If you need me, you need me. If not, cool. There's other jobs. And, you know, and so that energy, I had to grow into that energy because I used to be very much like, you know, please. Oh, ah, ah, you know, mm-hmm. and I know a lot of people like that who are, grown we're still like that and i'm like yo you just can't no one else runs the show but you yeah and and if you do that it'll it'll really affect it affects performance it affects performance it does um so yeah i think i just uh, i don't want to change my life but if there's something that you know i'm saying i could have you know given some advice who's like yo just you're good it's fine it's okay you know, because I, I mean, and I'm like that to this day. I want to do a good job. I want to be great. I want to, I want to execute. I want things to look right. I want to, uh, um, but also the best things are the most natural things, the most real things. Speaking in a similar vein, what advice would you give to, you know, aspiring creatives dealing with seeking validation, whether that's from, you know, fans or whether that's from the Hollywood institution, you know, the Golden Globes just happened recently. And there were not, I mean, there were a few, there were a few historic wins from black creatives, but overall we were mostly shut out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about how can we reconceive what success looks like for black people in this system? What would, what would you say to that? Okay. So this goes even deeper than uh, entertainment. This goes to us as people um, and not just black people. I mean, just human beings, right? And now, every time I do an interview or do any type of talking, I'm telling anyone that's hearing this, you go to therapy. Okay. That's number one. Go to therapy, talk to people about all of your wants, all of your needs, all your failures, whatever it is, whatever it is that you feel like you can't say you need to go to therapy. Or if it is, you just went on a walk today and you want to talk to someone about it. I think yeah. it's so, so important um, to think out loud and to talk through things out loud. Um, and I say that because people have a lot of trauma um un, unacknowledged trauma or people have a lot of you know pressures that they don't even know exist societal pressures you have cultural pressures yeah um, there's there's so many different ones and um so i'm saying that to say that we search for validation from partners from love you know search for validation and we'll be friends with maybe people we don't even like but just so we can have somebody around or, you know, all of these patterns, and then that'll translate into your, your creative, and you'll stop creating to be um, accepted because you have everything you have for yourself. You have self-love. That's something that I've been working on heavily this year that I think is super duper important. Um, and it translates, dude. You know, we live in a society where we, we, we want to look good, and we want people to think that we look good, and we want our lives to be great, and mm-hmm. it, it, it just becomes a... 
everything is go- coming from the outside in and then it goes back out. It's like you're the filter of everybody else's opinion and information and then you're trying to present that and everything should start here and go outward as a creative and just as a person. Um, so in terms of projects that you're working on or scripts that you're writing, um, it, you can't make it for anyone else. Because yeah. if you make things for everyone, then everyone is responsible for your happiness. Everyone is responsible for your fulfillment. Um, it's even like with my music, you know, people will tell me, hey, do it like this or write it like this. And I'm like, yeah, I would if you were making it, <laughs> but you're not. And if it comes out and it's not the way I want it, it'll hurt me forever for the rest of my life because it's something that I said was mine that wasn't mine, mm-hmm. you know, and that's super important. So if it's yours, it's yours. And um, I think that, I think we just, because it's already happening. I mean, some, thing, some things just when they're so, um, I just feel like us as a people, we're relentless in a way of, we're not, it's not even like we're trying to do anything, we're just, we're great. We're great at things. So you yeah. just keep seeing somebody yeah. doing something great. The, the door's gonna get wearing down, the hinges are gonna get broken and you know, all these things. And so I just say, let's focus on amazing, amazing work. Um, and what we think is great, you know, what we think is um, moving, and what we think makes our hearts bigger and what brings us together. Because um, people, at the end of the day, regardless what color they are, they're human. And if you watch a human story in your heart, Brett, you, there's nothing that you can do. You know, it's like, you know, you'll see people who are like, damn, I can't believe I'm even affected by this. But it's like, yo, we're all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So um, that's how I feel about it, dude. And I just, I, I know that there is a lot of, you know, powers that be that wish it otherwise, but it's inevitable. Yeah, uh, what, yeah. what we're meant to do and uh, what we have been doing and all the things that exist because of us that no one knows exists because of us. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of, you know, history is, is funny, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. dude, I think um, uh, congrats also to all the Golden Globe, you know, that the winners, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good projects, a lot of good projects. Yeah, a lot of good projects. There was something I was going to say and I'm forgetting it, but go ahead. <laughs>